Hey friends, Sean O'Shea here with Kawai. Today I'd like to explore Kawai's ES8 and show you how you can get the most out of the rhythm section feature. It's a very powerful and useful part of the instrument that's sometimes overlooked. Most folks buy the ES8 just for its touch and tone and use the piano sounds. And honestly, if that's all it did, it would already be a great value. But wait until you see what this rhythm section is capable of. I'm going to be moving kind of at a, a pretty quick clip compared to my other how-to videos because we've got a lot to cover and only a short amount of time to do it in. So I will remind you that you can always pause and rewind and review this video as you need to. Also, as always, if you need help, you can shoot us an email at the address on your screen and customers in the United States and Canada can call us at the phone number on your screen. All right, let's get started. How do I find the rhythm section? Well, right here in the front panel, button called, yeah, you guessed it, rhythm section. Just touch that, you'll see that your screen comes up and shows you a style of music, shows you uh, a chord that's going on, maybe, maybe it's the chord that we last used, uh, all, meaning the how many members of the band are involved, and uh, how fast it's gonna be, your tempo. There are three different modes uh, on this, modes meaning um, conducting the orchestra, if you will. First one is for the piano players, the folks who have both hands busily going up and down all 88 keys at any given moment that really play the piano, called normal, under the accept accompaniment mode rather, um, is going to be the one that is constantly uh, scanning all 88 notes and it's going to play along with whatever you're doing on all 88 notes. For a guy like me, who was brought up playing organs and, uh, and uh, accompaniment style keyboards, I really like to hold a chord out down in the left hand without having a muddy piano sound going on and sort of uh, conduct the band from there while my right hand is maybe doing other things or exploring, uh, exploring different instrument sounds and changing up uh, combinations of chords and things like that. So I like to set it on what's called one finger chord. Now, contrary to the name of that um, mode, you can use more than one finger. It will react if you just play one note, it'll play a corresponding major chord, but uh, it's musically correct in evaluating whatever combination of notes are on, going on down there. Now, here's another one preset chords, where the instrument actually picks the chords that corresponds to the style of music and shouts them out on the screen and you jam along. I'm going to give you examples of all this. First of all, how do I change um, the rhythm section? Right here in front, you'll see that the first thing that came up was this 50s triplet. Well, I want to change that, so let me go here to these buttons that say rhythm. Neat thing about the ES8 that is uh, a lot of these buttons do double duty. In fact, I think in some cases they do triple duty. So you can always be looking for the markings that uh, that show you around the instrument. And look at this one, number 55, smooth beat. Um, now when I move up one, notice what happens? Look, a little V appears next to smooth beat. That is the variation of smooth beat. Variation typically is a little bit busier. Maybe the bass is moving along a little more, or the guitar is strumming a little faster, or the drums get busier, whatever it might be. It's something maybe appropriate to the chorus of the song or a bridge of the song, whereas the original is probably going to be better for a verse or an, and an intro. So let's give you an example of that. Let's check out the smooth beat just the way it is. Uh, I want to start it, so I just press start. Two, three, four. Does a nice little intro. Again, I have this set to the one finger mode. I'm playing my own chords down here. And notice too that the piano is not sounding. For me, that's a good thing because I don't want to be trying to play a, a chord down here. That would be very muddy and very unpleasant. Also, this prevents me from getting in the way of that great bass player. 
so that's a good thing for me. You might prefer to change it to normal, where you're playing it piano style, all up all 88 keys, and the accompaniment will follow you the same way. Well, I'm going to move up now to the variation. It gets a little bit busier. Nice, tidy, neat ending. This is really useful if, uh, if you'd like to learn to jam along, if you'd like to improve your timing, or if you've got a little gig, maybe a, a restaurant or a party going on, and you'd like to sound like a little more than just a, a lonely piano player, you can bring the whole band with you. Pretty useful, pretty fun too, I might add. A few different ways that we can uh, change the band up. Uh, that's under here where it says part. If I touch it, it'll say, just drum. So it's just a regular piano. Now I touch it again and I add the bass. I'm going to turn on the variation, get a little bit busier, and I'm going to touch part again and bring in the whole band. I'm ready to be done. Stop. Now let's explore a style of music and tell the instrument Gosh, I'm really not sure what I should what I should play. So you guys decide. Well, this should be this should be interesting. Let me move down into something I wouldn't normally play. 16 beat one. It comes up on the screen, 100 beats per minute. That's cool, and it's telling me it's going to start this in uh, C minor seventh. Let me change to uh, an electric piano. Might be a little more interesting to jam along with. And let's give this a whirl. All right, press start. Watch the screen. Not too hard yet. Let's go back. If you get to know a pattern after a while and you maybe get bored with it and you wish it were a little different, there's 100 different patterns that you can change each of these styles to. When the rhythm section is activated, there will be a submenu available just for the rhythm section in the main screen. Navigation is accomplished with the two sets of up and down arrows found on each side of the LED display. The first one is the ability to adjust the volume of the entire rhythm section. Next is auto fill in. The default is set to occur every eight bars and your options are to change this to four bars, 12 bars, 16 bars or to shut it off altogether. Next on the list is access to a fun feature called one finger ad lib. With it enabled, the highest octave on the ES8 offers triggers for some fun automatic riffs. It's not something I choose to use, but you might like to give it a try. One up from there is another way to change the accompaniment mode between normal, one finger, and preset chords. As I showed you, you've already got its own dedicated button right on the main panel. Dig a little deeper in that, and you'll find a way to uh, change the inversion of the bass. Here's a really classic example of how that might be useful.
Well, if you've gotten this far, then you're pretty much an advanced rhythm section user. This is a really powerful and useful feature, and uh, I hope that this video has helped you explore some of the possibilities. Don't be afraid to just goof around and, uh, and push some buttons and have some fun. I'll see you soon in the next video. Thank you.